So let's do this. Scale of 1 to 10. Confidence level, the Rams offense will be ex- as explosive as it was last year. Scale of 1 to 10, what do you got? So, so 10, I'm, I'm saying they're going to be just as... I, 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 I don't, 10 is always good. good. Well, I'm just going to say this. I, I don't think they're going to be as explosive. I don't. I don't know what it is. They're just between no Andrew Whitworth, lost Austin Corbett, a, you know, offensive line. So I'm going to go with like a 6 here. I still think they're going to be a really good offense, but Van Jefferson dealing with a little injury, you know, Allen Robinson learning a new offense and, and, you know, indoctrinating him into that as well. I I don't know. There's just a part of me that the Super Bowl hangover, everybody's studying you. I I don't, for some reason, envision it being as as explosive as last year. So I'm going to go with a six there. Yeah, look, this hasn't been discussed that I'm aware of, but I can imagine that after Cooper Cup has a near historic season when it comes to catches and yards last year, defensive coordinators are going to be more committed to taking him away and forcing Stafford to go elsewhere. And that's where Allen Robinson and Van Jefferson come into play. There's no OBJ. There's no Robert Woods. If defenses are determined to not let Cooper Cup embarrass them the way he did last year, they can neutralize him. And look what was happening in the Super Bowl. They were neutralizing him. They were. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So uh, you got seven months to study what the Rams did. Can the Rams stay ahead of it? I agree with you. They did lose some guys. They aren't going to be quite what they were. They're going to be a work in progress, especially early on. I'll go with a seven as it relates to uh, last year's explosiveness translating to this year. Let's pivot down to Tampa Bay. Your confidence level that Tom Brady will pick up where he left off last season, despite his absence from training camp and the fact that, as the rest of us are, he's a year older. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm still going to put it at like an eight. I, I mean, I, I still I, – I got tremendous confidence here. I do. Maybe it should be nine. I'll go nine. Uh, Their team is just too damn good. He still throws the ball great. They have a really damn good offensive line. You know, I know we got to figure a few things out in the middle there, but I don't think it's going to be as, like, drastic or or as concerning as people think. You know, there's no Gronk, but, hey, you hear Julio. It's Mike Evans. Godwin's there. I think some of these young guys are going to start to pop up a little bit more. Jalen Darden. Uh, uh, so I, I'm, I'm still very confident in, in Brady and his ability to push the ball down the field and be aggressive. So I'm going to go nine here. I, I, I'm surprised that you're going that high. I, I, I just, you think it might, you think old, the old man might come through here a little bit well, more and well, I, I mean, father time is undefeated. Yeah. I just, I just am amazed that Tom Brady's held him off as long as he had. I'm looking at this from a, a, a broader perspective. Um, And I'm trying to draw upon life experiences. Like if you're in a, if you're in a relationship that you want out of and you can't get out of it. So you decide to just give it another try. How many times is it better? Like if you're dating somebody, yeah, we've all been there. You're dating somebody and it's really not going well. And maybe there's somebody else you'd like to date and that doesn't work out. So you just kind of stick with who you have. And it, when does that ever work, Chris? And that's kind of what happened here. If, if, if we're going to acknowledge that he wanted to go to Miami, that he wanted to leave the Buccaneers, and he comes back and they've made the change by making Bruce Arians not the coach and now Todd Bowles is the coach, I just don't know that the vibe, whatever contributed to Tom Brady wanting out, I don't understand how that's going to be instantly better. And he's a year older. And you don't have Ryan Jensen at center, so you're susceptible to heat coming up the middle. And I know they got Shaq Mason to replace one of the guards who left. You had Kappa who left, and then the one retired. And I, I, I think that that you know we were talking. Uh, I think during the break about how Brett Favre should have left Minnesota after 2009, right, at that right. 2010 season. It was just one year too many. I think there's a chance this is going to be one year too many mm. for Tom Brady in Tampa. And so I'm going to say – I was going to go six, but since you said nine, I'm at least going to hedge a little bit. I'll say six and a half to seven. <laughs> okay. But I just – I, 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 I I'm looking you. at the evidence that's out there. I and know. on top of it, he's taken a 10-day break during training camp for a personal reason that continues to be this great mystery – 
that until we know what it is, we can't even begin to figure out how it's going to factor into his performance this year. Uh, is yeah. it something that gets solved with 10 days away and he comes back next week and everything's fine, like no issue, I'm fine, I have no distractions, I can go all in on football, whatever the personal reason was, 10 days away, solved it conclusively and permanently? I, there's too many questions for me. Okay, I I, I get you. <clears throat> I get you. And I, I worry about the age thing too. I hear you. I mean, you know, again, like we saw, and if the offensive line can't protect, just like we saw in the Rams game, I mean, the Rams should have blown them out in that game. I mean, they were just dropping the ball left and right. That game should have been 45 to, to 10. I mean, it was so I, there is concern there for sure. But damn, I don't know. I just, I just have a hard time doubting the guy. And then I just have the ultimate respect for Byron Leftwich as an offensive mind. Uh, just their ability to, to come up with aggressive game plans and be dangerous that way. So that's where I'm like, I'm flawed. And then, I, I, Mike, I, I, don't, I don't think you're crazy for what you said. I certainly – that's on my radar too. I guess I'm just going with the fact that he's Brady and he's going to find some way to, to look damn good as he does usually. And, again – we just assume you pop Bruce Arians out, you plug Todd Bowles in, and everything is fine. We're taking for granted that Arians was a very good game day coach. Why? Because we never were talking about him on Monday screwing up a game by making a bad decision as to when to go for it, when to call a timeout, when to do this, when to do that, the key decisions that a coach makes on game day. There was never a time where he was like this, you know, like a Mike McCarthy, like, what the hell is he doing? That was never the case with Bruce Arians. And now Todd Bowles has to has to manage to to live up to that level of achievement. Confidence level. Uh oh, blow the horn. The Vikings will have a top 10 offense this season. They were 12th last year with a defensive head coach whose defense sucked and a revolving door at offensive coordinator. They still were number 12. How confident are you they'll be a top 10 unit with Kevin O'Connell as the head coach? I'm going to go eight here. I'm going to go eight. I, I mean, I almost want to go harder, but it is a new coach and a new, you know, system for everybody. So I guess I'm a little, you know, timid to go there all in. But, man, I mean, the offensive line kind of looked good against the Raiders. You got three damn good running backs there in Minnesota. And those two receivers are the real deal. And then really you got three, you got three or four receivers, you know, the, the third and fourth receiver aren't bad either. And Osborne and um, I'm blanking out on the other guy, but Smith then Marset. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, so I, I cousins is an underrated quarterback who I think will be able to take advantage of a system that has more to offer. So I certainly can see them being a top 10 offense this year. I, I'm going nine. Yeah. I, look, and, and, and you know how I felt about the decision to hire Kevin O'Connell. I thought they should have hired Jim Harbaugh. Uh, but, you know, as we get closer to this thing and you do consider how well the offense did despite the dysfunction last year, despite uh, a head coach who withheld thinking. praise from, from Kirk Cousins, and it was just a constant irritant between him and and the quarterback of the team. And now you've got a guy who's a quarterback whisperer who's got experience with Cousins. And Dalvin Cook could be special, as special as he's, as he's been if he can stay healthy, which, which he has for the most part. Justin Jefferson poised to become the Cooper Cup of this attack. Adam Thielen's still getting it done and a real red zone, red zone weapon. Irv Smith, if he can stay healthy, had a thumb problem. Uh, last year it was a knee that, that caused him to miss the whole season. K.J. Osborne. And we, we talked about Smith Marset and Albert Wilson with a couple of touchdown catches. Yeah, Albert, that's one. who I was if he thinking. Could make, if that's he could right, make the right, roster, right. if he could make the roster at age 30, he could be a difference maker. Uh, and Alexander Madison, if and when Dalvin Cook is banged up, I, I, I think that, that the offense is going to be really good. The question is going to be, can the defense in this shift from a 4-3 to a 3-4 be significantly better? But – when you look at how bad it was last year, I mean, it's kind of like the Cowboys defense. Everybody thinks they were the 85 Bears all of a sudden. No. They, they, they in were the 21st the crap that football. they were the year right. before. <laughs> right. Yeah. If they were horrible the year before, so anything is going to be an improvement. So I, I, I could see the Vikings having the kind of year that the Cowboys had last year where they're surprisingly good, they get to the playoffs, and, and then it's on them – to see if they can can find a way to thread the needle in in the close in both conferences contests that we see in the postseason. Yeah, I'm with you there, Mike. I I I I I hear you, and I think that offense can be dangerous for sure. All right, 
confidence level of the Kansas City Chiefs offense will not miss a beat without receiver Tyreek Hill. <laughs> that's my that's my number. How's it? What do you think that is? <laughs> I have 10, 12, 25. Put Morning. the highest number horses you want on there. In the bit. Yeah. I Morning mean, what? I have no. The I, they will be the. They will be one of the best offenses in football. People are insane to think that Tyree Kill was the thing that made that thing go. He's awesome. I get that. They got weapons galore. I think they're going to be a team on a mission this year. They got to the AFC Championship game last year and they played B plus football last year. I mean, come on. They, they, they played like crap for the first half of the year. They were in Super Bowl hangover, trying to find themselves. Only Mahomes can play like crap and still look like the best quarterback in football. I mean, they're, they're amazing. I just, I just I don't have any doubt about this crew. And, in fact, I think in some ways, you know, it's not like they're not replacing them at all with anything. I think this is one where I go, you know, I, I actually think the spreading of the wealth here is going to be more of a pain in the ass for defenses. I think Tyree Kill almost pigeonholed them to a degree and, wait, we got to get him off and we got to do this and put him there and do this and do this. And it was almost a telltale sign for defenses at time. And listen, I think Tyree Kill is amazing. But with this quarterback and this offensive mind of Andy Reid and a really good offensive line and still tons of weapons, I just go – no way. I just 10, 10 all the way here. Yeah. Look, the, I know. the obvious question yeah. is, well, the obvious yeah. question is Tyree kill is gone and he's a guy that commanded extra attention all the time. However, however, there's an argument to be made that having Tyree kill on the team, and having him as an option that was available to Patrick Mahomes could become counterproductive because you've got Mahomes wanting to drive the Ferrari. He's got all these other cars that he can drive really well, right. but he wants to throw it 70 yards down the field to this guy who can get behind anyone and everyone. And we saw what happened in Super Bowl 54. We were talking about the 10-point lead that was squandered by the 49ers. What was the play that started it? It was that jet chip wasp play yeah. that Peter King diagrammed after the game, met with Andy Reid, broke it all down, how it all worked, and it was Tyree Kill. So I that's the challenge. Yeah. And maybe the, the maybe when they sat down to look at all factors, the money that Tyree Kill wants, the extent to which he was becoming a pain in the ass behind the scenes, and he admitted it himself in his podcast. That he was agitating, never took it public, but he made it private. He he wasn't happy with the number of times he was getting the ball. Well, he got the ball a lot of times. He got the ball a lot of times. So I, I think they would like to develop more options. They would like to use Patrick Mahomes in a way where he spreads the ball around. That's the challenge, though. If you don't have a guy that's going to command double coverage, you got to be able to get through read one, read two, read three, read four. You got to have command of the full field. You got to spot before the play even begins where your open guy is going to be like Tom Brady has done in recent years. Yeah. Now that we're at year five as a starter for Patrick Mahomes, maybe he's getting to that point where he's got an even greater command pre-snap of what's going to happen once he has the ball. So it's Andy Reid. It's Patrick Mahomes. They do have weapons. I was hesitant throughout mo much of the offseason, but I'll say nine. I'll say nine. Niner. Just, just in case, nine. Yeah. All right. Uh, although I, I agree with you, there's reason to believe they're going to be exactly what they were. Last one, confidence level that Josh Allen and the Bills will live up to the preseason hype that is being heaped upon them. This is the kiss of death, usually. Right? It really is. This is what you don't want. You want to be <laughs> right. the team that everybody is overlooking. What's your faith that they'll live up to the hype? Well, I, we, we mentioned it earlier on in the show. Uh, I, to me, you know, the New England offensive coordinator thing is you know a big deal. And, like, Ken Dorsey taking over for Brian Dayball and, and what they do in Buffalo, I think that's another huge thing that's kind of been overlooked here. And and I don't mean any disrespect to Ken Dorsey or the Bills. I just – I got to see it a little first. That's where I, I question. I mean, this – Dayball is a really damn good offensive mind slash quarterback whisperer. You know, those, it's not easy – easily replaced. It's not just, hey, let's just call this play because I got – there's a way of – 
packaging these plays and having a feel of sequencing of the plays. Ooh, if I do this and this, they'll adjust and do that, and then I could do this. And will Ken Dorsey have the feel for that stuff? I have no doubt in Josh Allen. I mean, Josh Allen and Mahomes are the king of kings. They, to me, are the best quarterbacks in the football, and they're in a little bit of a class of their own. So I don't doubt him. So it's like I'm going to go eight just because it's like I want to give 10 to Josh Allen, and then I have a little trepidation with the Ken Dorsey thing. So I'll go eight there uh, overall. They had a lot of hype going in last year, too. Remember what happened week one at home against the Steelers? Yeah. Fell asleep at the wheel a little they bit. Caught had a punt blocked. Foot. Right. Yeah. 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 I know. Josh Allen um, held the ball, got strip sacked by TJ Watt, all that stuff. I I I I I'll say seven. I'll say seven. And I feel like that's a little high. I just feel like the the Bills are the team that's being set up to fail with all this hype. And it may be that they deliver. But the AFC is so tightly packed. You give me any team versus the field, I'm taking the field. Because the field is so potent. And the Bills are going to have the – they didn't make it to the Super Bowl and they got a bigger bullseye on them than the Bengals do. <laughs> no, I I, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And the Chiefs are still the Chiefs. And they're the, – this is perfect for the Chiefs. This is perfect no for them. Doubt. I mean, they were up – I know. They were up big in the first half of the AFC Championship. It's amazing to me they didn't make it back to the Super Bowl. And, and uh, they're just going to keep on rolling. Now they're in a tough division – but at least everyone's not heaping all this praise on them and hype on them that can become counterproductive. You really do have a challenge if you're Sean McDermott to get your guys to go back. Hey, think of how they had their hearts ripped out in the playoff game. And you go back to zero and zero. You're back at the bottom of the mountain and you've got to climb it again. And you know what happened the last two times you got close to the top of the mountain. You got smacked down in Kansas City each time. That's hard. We saw the Saints do it, and we've seen the Bills do it before getting all the way to the Super Bowl, and they went back three times. Right. It's, I, I, I think we need to understand what, what a psychological challenge that is to go all the way back to the beginning and try it again when you come so close and, and you feel like we put all that effort in and we didn't get to where we wanted to be. I just think it's hard to reset. There's a lot of reasons to, to be leery if you're a Bills fan and having all this hype would only make me more leery. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, it scares me too. It does. I'm hoping they can play a little bit different style of football where it's just not always on Josh Allen. Hey, it's third and two or, okay, let's run Josh Allen. Hey, it's third and 12. Hey, Josh, make magic happen and throw a laser somewhere. You know, I, I'm hoping they can be a hair more balanced in the run game and that way. And then, you know, the defense, I, I know Leslie Frazier and McDermott are going to have that crew ready. My thing is, can they have that crew ready? See, to me, they were the number one defense last year because of the coaching, because of Leslie Frazier and McDermott. They, they, on that side of the ball, hopefully Von Miller, maybe Kair Elam, their first-round corner, some of these guys, Tredavious White being back healthy, they need some guys that can make some plays, take some pressure off of McDermott and Leslie Frazier so they don't always have to call the perfect defense and game plan. You know, I, I think we talked about this earlier in the offseason. They kind of feasted on the poor when it became to their defense. When they played good offenses last year, whether it was, you know, the Chiefs or the Colts and some other games, you know, the Patriots even, you know, especially the second one in New England. There's other ones that I'm just trying to rattle off the top of my head. They weren't, like, dominant. It wasn't like, oh, man, the, the scary Buffalo Bills are coming to town. Whenever there was a team that had a quarterback and kind of a good offensive plan, they weren't the most dominant defense. And I think maybe they got some, some horses in there this year that can make them – Hey, coach doesn't have to dial up the perfect play. Von Miller's going to get around the edge and get a strip sack. Gregory Rousseau in second year is going to make some plays. Ed Oliver, blah, blah, blah. So I, I'm hopeful that they can do it a little bit more as a team and not ride Josh Allen so hard. We need to take a break, but let me just say this. Yeah. The shift from Brian Dayball to Ken Dorsey should not be underestimated. And it gets back to an argument I've been making. When you have an offensive head coach in this age of offense – and how important it is to have that coach tied to the quarterback. Nothing against Sean McDermott. I'm just saying generally, you don't have to worry about your, your quarterback whisperer becoming a head coach elsewhere 
when your offensive coordinator and your head coach are the same guy. And he's the, cause he ain't going anywhere as yeah. long as it's working. He's Sean McVay and he's staying put. That's where one of the biggest concerns comes from this year, all because the head coach isn't the offensive guy who's tied to Josh Allen. All right, let's take a break. The Roquan Smith situation in Chicago getting a little stranger as the Bears try their best to get their star linebacker signed to a new contract. More PFT Live right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.